Hi, this is me, Simon, and you're watching my new channel, Simon's Got It Covered. Alright guys, how's it going? So, um, what I'm going to go through in this video is uh, how to get started on Nuendo 4. So, I'm going to open that up and it will load all the VST plugins and other bits. The first thing is you go top left hand corner, file, then new project. You're brought up with this window um, asking you which template. So go with empty and hit OK. And um, then it'll ask you which directory you want to store stuff in. Now, I've made this directory under local disk C uh, called Nuendo Projects just to keep it all in the same place. So I'm going to use that. But you can, you can create your own folder anywhere uh, in my documents if you want, wherever. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use this one. So I'll hit OK. So this is your project window. You'll notice at the moment it doesn't actually have a title. So first thing I'll do is go file, save as, and I like to, I kind of put everything in folders. So I'll make a new folder called test2, and then within that I'll actually save the file. And the reason why I do that is because uh, Nuendo kind of makes loads of little backup files and other bits which will just clog up the folder if you save them in um, the sort of master folder. So now you've got that set up, the first thing, you might find that um, your audio device just plays and records and works fine straight off. On the other hand, it might not. So the first thing you want to do is along the top, you go devices and device setup. And then you present it with this window go down to whatever's below VST audio system basically and you should be able to see your you should see your sound card name here so this is set up fine for me at the moment and I can see the input and output latency and that's fine that's it's not causing too much trouble um, so if this isn't the device that you want to use you want to hit the control panel button here and you'll have a list of any well your sound card and any other hardware you've connected as well so for me, I've got this thing called Line 6 Toneport UX8, and I don't want to use that, but if I did, then I could tick that box, clear that box, and do the same for inputs as well. So you've got outputs up here, and inputs down here. But like I say, that's fine. I'm, I'm happy just using my sound card at the moment, which is what I had before, so all those settings don't matter to me, but you might need to change them, that's all. That's why I showed you them. So once you've got that set up, <clears throat> so once you've got that set up, you just hit OK, and you're brought back to the project window. I'll give you a little run through of where everything is on Nuendo, because there's obviously differences between recorded software. Um, so down here, which is kind of the main feature, is the transport bar. Now, if you've worked with any other recording software in the past, this is probably going to be pretty familiar to you. I mean, you've gotten here your standard stuff like play, stop, rewind, fast forward, record. Um, it's also got some pretty cool other stuff on it, like uh, it's got a, a stereo out volume um, markers and also tempo, some other bits over here, um, but I'll go through how you'd use all that in a later video. Um, if you didn't want this here, because obviously this is floating around the screen, I can drag it wherever I want. Um, if you didn't want this, there's a little button here, close, so just hit that, you can get rid of it, or get it back by going up to transport and clicking transport panel, or F2. Um, around the top we've got, so this is sort of your run, stop, uh, audio engine if you need to use that. Um, a couple of buttons here, uh, which to be honest most of them you wouldn't need to fiddle with I don't think. Um, I sometimes use, well I sometimes use, I do use the mixer. Um, so this is the mixing view. Um, you'll do this later on in the project I think, like um, once you've got all your stuff recorded, You'll have all your various tracks lined up here, and you can adjust the faders and uh, some other little properties. So it's it's kind of getting your um getting your whole score to exactly the right volumes with respect to everything else. So right now you don't need to worry about that. This is the main one you'll be recording and working with. Um, what else up here? Yeah, you need to you want to make sure that you've got show well the inspector panel, which is blank. It's got nothing on it at the moment, but um, it will do and it's pretty important so yeah you want to keep that there uh, moving along you've got a mini transport bar uh, you don't really need that I suppose if you've got this transport bar here but uh, and you can remove and, and add any toolbars by right clicking and taking them off but I'll just leave it like that for now 
Uh, further along, you've got all your tools. So uh, select, range selection, um, splitting, erasing, zooming in, warp time, um, play. They're all pretty self-explanatory. It's kind of easy to get to grips with those. Um, further along, you've got the auto scroll feature. So this is where you've got, say, well, you've got a score that's longer than three bars apparently according to my screen so say you've got a score that's longer than 73 bars right at the end then it's playing through and it go it will go off the screen unless you have auto scroll so it's good for keeping track of uh, where you are when a score is playing through okay uh, the next one this is pretty important as well uh, the snap tool now uh, with this I've got it on at the moment and to be honest I have it on most of the time um, unless I'm doing some really fine editing um, and this basically allows, uh, snaps the cursor to the nearest, in this case, what well, you can select bar, the nearest bar, the, near, the nearest beat, or use quantize, which is then brings this little drop down into play. So select any sort of pers um, fraction of a bar that you want from this. So if I go for half, um, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see a bit clearer. Um, so obviously these are bars, 13, 14, and it will snap to the nearest half bar. You see what I'm doing there? Okay. So yeah, you don't have to work with that. You can just have it anywhere you like by um, by taking snap off. But I usually work with it because it's really useful. Right. So that's pretty much all the toolbars. You you know the standard stuff that's on screen right now. Um, so you want to get some audio into this. So the, your next set will be right clicking on this darker blue bit here. Um, you can add an audio track an instrument track or a MIDI track or any of these other things, video tracks there. Um, but say I was recording vocals or something, I'd be putting an audio track on. So I'll click on that. This dialog box, com box comes up. Um, I can have, say, five audio tracks or, you know, whatever, basically, any number. I don't know what it goes up to. But say I just want to add four tracks for now. Um, and you can add more later, of course. Um, I'll have it in stereo configuration. You can choose mono and some other stuff. And that's pretty much that. So I'll click OK. And it'll add those four to the pane. Now you've got a whole load of stuff that's come up here now. Um, but don't worry, we'll go through that in a minute. Um, but these are your four tracks. So, and while I'm here, I've pretty much shown you the zoom feature. But um, let's go over this in more detail. So down here, this is your um, horizontal zoom. So you can zoom into your score. You see the bar numbers are getting closer and closer. And then you can see individual uh, gradients within each bar. So that's useful for like fine editing or if you want to see the whole project at the end. And then you've got uh, vertical zooming. So this expands out all the tracks. And you basically see all the buttons that are on every track. Um, so looking at a typical track, you can obviously rename it. So I'll name this test one. And you've got, you know, your standard stuff, mute, stare, uh, mute, solo. You've got the recording arm there. So you need to tick that and then you'd hit record to, to get it to do something. Um, monitor. So it will feed back the signal that you're recording. Um, you've also got read, enable and write, enable. And that's for automation. Um, don't worry too much about that for now. That's it, it will come into play in a later video um, for editing stuff. But these buttons are really useful. Um, what else? Edit channel settings. So in here, it's kind of a, a different view to the inspector window. Does pretty much the same thing, but um, it's just arranged differently. So for simplicity, I just I just keep it real and keep everything you know on here. Uh, there's a couple of other buttons here which I don't particularly use. Um, maybe lock track, but yeah, it's up to you. So. I clicked on this test, this, this track called test one. Over in the left hand pane, the inspector pane, you've now got all these uh, row, all these headings, if you like. So it's got the name of track number one, the name of the track. Um, all of the buttons that you see on here are also on here. So got a bigger recording arm button, mute, solo, that sort of stuff. Uh, volume for the track, which I can adjust or, or key in a figure. So I want 4.5. 8 dB, I can do that. Um, panning, and there's also a time delay if you wanted to put that in, uh, to just to this track, that is. Um, what else? 
So that's that's pretty much the channel settings for, for an audio track. Uh, you can close up that menu like that. And the next one down, inserts. So this is all your effects, basically. Um, so I'll click on this tiny, tiny little arrow you see here. And then you've got a whole wealth of effects that come with um, new endo. I've got some extra ones here um, from other stuff that I use. But um, yeah, I mean, new endo comes with plenty, to be honest. So just taking an example, Roomworks is one that comes with new endo. They're generally pretty nice looking, actually. So I'm going to close that up. So that that's the that effect is now in that pane. Um, what else? You've got equalizers here. So if I turn one on, I can change the uh, the high shelf uh, cutoff frequency and also some other stuff if you wanted to use those. Uh, sends are there. Much the same thing. This idea is inserts. You know, you just click the button and you can insert stuff. Um, channel settings so this is uh, kind of an expansion coming off the mixer pane I showed you earlier so uh, let me get back to this screen so yeah you've got your um, volume fader for that track mute solo and uh, listen which I guess the same is is the same as monitor um, haven't actually tried that I've never never needed to use that um, what else notepad if you want to write some notes so this is uh, a microphone track la 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 whatever you can write stuff in there notes for yourself kind of thing quick controls not really sure what that does haven't ever had to use it um, so that's the left hand pane for each track for each audio track um, if I was to now that those are audio tracks of course um, if I wanted to record on any of these then I can hit the record enable on this track I'll monitor, I'll listen back to what's coming, what I'm actually recording. And then I um and then I'll hit record, basically. And it will start recording. We're quite zoomed out at the moment, so it is going. There we go. Obviously I have I'm not actually recording anything at the moment, but um I'm just showing how it's how you how you do it. So that's recorded that. Um that's a recorded clip basically, and you can play around with it from there. I I won't go through ed any editing in this video, but just the, the raw basics for getting started. Okay. So if I wanted to add an instrument track or a MIDI track, it's kind of the same thing. I'll go for an instrument track. Um, I just want the one track this time. And I'll go for... Uh, let's go for Superior Drummer. That's a nice VST. So I'll hit OK on that. Um, it's inserted this track. And then I can... I'll expand this up. Yeah, you can individually expand tracks out and in. So I can make this one really big, this one really small, whatever. Or as I say, you can expand them all up like that. Okay. So stuff's kind of a, a tiny bit different than the left-hand pane in the inspector pane. Now that I've got an instrument track, but the main feature, I mean, it, a lot of this is the same, but you've got a little button here. There's probably other ways of getting to this button, but um, this little button opens up the VST window. So there's Superior Drummer, um, and I can hit stuff, whatever, and uh, it's it's actually pretty responsive um, compared to other plugins I've uh, to other plugins compared to other recording software I've used. This is actually uh, it's actually really uh, really responsive, so that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, I can just close and open it as I please and adjust the settings. Um, quite easily. So that's the instrument track. Uh, MIDI track is much the same and, and there's these other tracks you can add like video track as well. Okay so uh, that's that's pretty much getting started on Nuendo. Um, if you've got any questions or any comments then leave them in the comments section below. Uh, please subscribe because I'll be doing more of these videos. Yeah so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this has been useful and uh, see you next time. Bye!